you didn't catch in the beginning of the prayer that it is the solemnity of Christ the King, uh, a Lord of, of the universe, you probably noticed something different, at least with the, the music. See, Carrie's playing the organ a little louder today in celebration of Christ the King because it's such a beautiful celebration that we want to celebrate that Jesus truly is the King of the universe. Praise God that we have him as our king. Praise God we have a king who truly desires to hear from us, who desires to fill all the desires of our heart. You know, last week I, I preached about our, our stewardship campaign, and I was trying to find a unique way to, to wrap up the homily with the stewardship campaign. I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure it out. So I just want to remind you that at the end of the pews are our stewardship campaign cards. Hopefully this past week you've been able to prayerfully consider how you can continue to uh, support St. John the Baptist and our ministries. So we're asking, if possible, for that 5% increase. If you have that card filled out, praise God. You can drop it off in the, off in the offertory baskets. If you don't have that card filled out and you want to do it during the homily, I give you full permission. All right? So, so there we go. But once again, please make sure to get that filled out this week or next week uh, so we can really plan accordingly for uh, the, the future. Once again, that theme, though, once again, is, is lift up your hearts. And I just love how we're able to lift our hearts before the Lord. It's a unique gospel we have today, isn't it? We hear from John. We've been hearing from Mark all through year B. See, next week when we come to Mass, we're in a new liturgical year. We'll be in Advent. But this last weekend is always dedicated to the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ the King. And it's a unique reading we take from, from, from John. It's actually between Jesus and Pilate. We know that Jesus has been arrested. And so now there's two kings together. One who thinks they have all the power. On the other one, humbled in humility and chains. Beaten and scourged. And they have this conversation Pilate saying, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus responding, do you say this on your own? Or have others told you about me? It doesn't quite make sense. This would be then the passage for Christ the king. But it's actually the last lines here that really reveal the purpose of Jesus' ministry. Pilate says to him, then you are a king. Some people can interpret that by the way of saying, is, is this really Pilate asking? But it's more of a statement that Pilate is saying, then you are a king. And how does Jesus respond? You say, I am a king. But it's this next line which is really, really important to get. For this I was born and for this I came into the world. Did you catch that? Why did Jesus come into the world? For this, I was born. I was, we could use a more lay term. He said, I was made for this, right? Different word, might be more theological. I was begotten for this, right? This is what the whole point, at least in John's gospel and throughout salvation history, is for Jesus' kingdom to come to fruition. And that he longs to be our king. So if someone says to you, what is Jesus' purpose in this life? Why are you a Christian? You can say, because he is my king. He is my Lord and my Savior. And his kingdom has what? His kingdom has no end. Isn't that beautiful? Am I the only one that's really smiling? No, we should all be smiling, right? His kingdom has no end. And guess what? You and I are part of this kingdom especially if you've been baptized. Why? Because when we are baptized, what happens? We are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but also baptized in this reality of priest, prophet, and king, that we get to share in his kingdom 
forever. Just like the Sandlot, right? Forever. It has no end. This is what we're celebrating today. And we know that we have a king that what? A king that truly cares about us. Who's willing, not only willing, he does lay down his life for us shortly after this passage. Why? Because he is a king who truly cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about us. He'll do anything for you. Because he is a good king. And a kingdom that has no end. What he wants for us is to be part of this kingdom. But how does this happen? It's this last line as well. This is what Jesus says. Everyone who belongs to this truth, let's use a different word, everyone who belongs to this kingdom listens to my voice. That we truly hear the king's voice. And we follow in his ways. Not in a sense of like, oh, I have to follow God. That's not the type of king he wants to be. It's more like this. I get to go to God who loves me, who cares for me, who gives me eternal life. You know, in John's Gospel, we have a couple examples, of course, of people who have come to this, this truth, who have listened to the word of God. You can see, of course, the beautiful uh, image of the woman at the well and that, that long conversation where all of a sudden she has said, I have found our Savior. Probably the most popular figure in, in John's Gospel, we kind of see that transformation of their heart leaving darkness into light. Is who? It's Nicodemus. Nicodemus, who comes to him at first, I think it's in John 3, right? Comes to him in that, that darkness at night. But at the end, after he's been listening to Jesus, he's the one taking him down from the cross. He's a follower of Jesus. He's part of his kingdom. We think of the kingdom, right? The two thieves, the two criminals, side by side with Jesus on the cross. Today you'll be with me in my kingdom. These words are for us as well. How beautiful it is, but in order for us to truly be God's people, we need to truly let him be our king, to let him be the one who is in charge. And what is that key part of that? That we too have to humble ourselves and acknowledge that we are not the king and actually be happy about that. Not only acknowledge like, I know I'm not the king, but if I had my way, what movie kind of displays that the most beautiful, by the way? The movie probably, probably all we've seen, and it probably every single Christ the King, I've probably mentioned this movie, we know it, The Lion King, right? Who are we in The Lion King? So often we want to be scarred, don't we? I know we don't, like we're like, no, we don't want to be scarred, but then like I tell God what's going on, and I put my kingdom that way. It's silly, it's a silly example, but it's a beautiful one. And when Scar does get the kingdom, what happens, by the way? Well, he's not a king that truly cares for his people. He only cares about himself. He's prideful. So who should we be like? Well, you're like, well, I'll be like Simba, because then I'm a king anyways. No. We need to be one of those animals that come, and I know it sounds silly, right? But in the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie, to come and adore the Lord. And let him have reign over us. And we actually we do this every single Sunday when we come to Mass. What do we do when we come to Mass? The first thing we should do when we come into this church at least is what? Now my knees are a little bad, but I'm going to try this, okay? Because I don't have a railing to hang on to. So when we come to Mass, we, I'll use this. What are we doing here? We're acknowledging that God truly is present in the tabernacle. We're kneeling before him. That image in the Lion King, when they present the child, right? All the animals going down. 
Just some imagery to try to help us to realize the beauty, the beautiful reality that he is our king. And we need to allow him to be our king. So when we do this, we know that we're going to be taken care of. Not only in this world, but in a kingdom that has no end.